throughout the ages, the turtle has existed. With numbers that were once astronomical now alarming, people nowadays have been doing all that they can to preserve these endangered animals. But why do the people bother to help these turtles, and how do they go about it? Well, one of the most effective means to reach a broad audience is with a documentary! And one of the more popular uses of a documentary is for wildlife, in particular when the wildlife is in DANGER! And fighting crime is cool and all, but it may not be the most applicable here. <laughs> of course, there are other options too, such as going outside and asking for help from others. Hey you! Who, who, me? I said help. But I'm not. Yes, loser. There's a turtle here missing its hands. Uh, what hand? No! Impressive. <laughs> I don't imagine you get much repeat business, though. He tries his best. So with that said, let's delve into how documentaries typically portray sea turtles by briefly analyzing them to see why there are certain conventions that are so popular. TRANSITION SCREEN! Turtles have existed since the age of the dinosaurs, and since humans have discovered their uses, their numbers have started to dwindle. For a mouth-watering soup. Watering, and we're going to taste this in a little bit. To jewelry that to some is in bad taste. A veterinarian in Florida discovered a sea turtle pendant inside a tortoise's body. Oh, and actual sea turtle jewelry as well. Although, uh, this isn't exactly made out of sea turtles, just made in the image of sea turtles. To visual representations, although these didn't necessarily hurt turtles, but more so portray them in an awesome fashion. By the way, that's not my editing software. And with dwindling numbers, documentaries have been made to show the states of these turtles. And of course, there are people who touch the more sympathetic side of things. Once the newborn hatchlings are released, they spend most of their adult life traveling the oceans and mostly on the floors of the ocean. They come back to the same coast as to where they were hatched 15 to 20 years later to lay their eggs. This is the circle of life. From peaceful openings. To providing fun facts. Wham! That's a direct hit. It's painless for the turtle, though, because we use a special kind of harpoon point, just enough of it to penetrate his tough layer of shell. That is now known to be nonsense. Nerve endings by the hundreds fill both shell and bone, but myths die as hard as the turtles. 
tiger sharks and their relatives kill sea turtles in deep water. But in these shallows, this loggerhead turtle can turn the tables. The turtle is biting the shark. It has no teeth, but the sharp serrated plates in its strong jaws can inflict serious injury. In shallow water, the shark's movements are restricted, and it has difficulty fighting back. After a breath of air, the valiant turtle can return to feeding. It can give as good as it gets. One terrapin grabs a bird. The others crowd in to snatch what they can. Even birds as big as doves are not safe from the helmeted terrapin's submarine attack. A lone terrapin could overcome the dove, but hungry rivals are on their way. As many as 200,000 turtles might haul out onto this beach on one night. 20 years ago, it would have been a million, but this is still one of the biggest Aribatas in the world. The Aribata that we're witnessing now may easily have 100,000 turtles participating. And 100,000 turtles at 100 eggs per turtle, roughly, that means 10 million eggs. The studies carried out on this beach indicate that roughly 8% of all the eggs laid on this beach will actually hatch and turn into little turtles. Now, that does not mean that these little turtles will turn, will turn into adults. A wild guess is one out of 100. Sea turtles are an amazing creature and part of an important ecosystem. That ecosystem is the ocean. If sea turtles become extinct, the impact could be crucial to the world's oceans. I'm Dr. Ashley Spring. I'm a biology professor at Eastern Florida State College. So it's important to figure out what chemicals you are using and make sure you're disposing of them properly. Contact your waste disposal company in your area because many things cannot be dumped down our drains. As we know, everything leads to the ocean. And so when you do dump chemicals down the sink, although you may be adding water and soap to them, they're going right into the oceans where they're going to affect our marine life. trash on the beach. Don't release helium balloons into the air. They end up in the ocean. Turn out lights that could be seen from the beach. Don't touch any hatchlings when they are trying to swim into the ocean. You can even adopt a sea turtle online. From a larger standpoint, you can also contact companies. You can also contact your government officials and discuss with them why specific chemicals should not be used. An easy way to help the environment, not only sea turtles but other organisms, is to avoid using plastic bags. Recycle, reduce, and reuse. So in the case of plastic bags, sea turtles like the loggerhead sea turtle who consume uh, jellies think that a floating plastic bag looks like a jelly. They'll swallow it and because their body can't break it down in their stomach, it remains inside the stomach. Sea turtle thinks it's full and eventually actually starves to death. So by using reusable bags when you go to the grocery store and other stores, you can reduce the number of plastic bags that go into our landfills and our ocean. The Papilloma can be found in a tumor form on the sea turtles as large as about the size of a golf ball and even up to the size of a tennis ball. It's found in the soft tissue areas on sea turtles, around their eyes, under their flippers, and it can have an effect not only having an annoying large tumor on the side of you, but can affect their sight if it's around their eyes, can affect their feeding when it's around their mouth, and even blocking their um, ability to swallow as it gets larger. 
and when around their fins makes it more difficult to swim. It's found in about 50% of all green sea turtles in the Indian River Lagoon and about 25% of all sea turtles found in Florida, either on the brink of dying or dead, have the fibropapilloma. That's about double in green sea turtles found in the Indian River Lagoon. So why so much higher in the Indian River Lagoon? Pollution. The problem is in the Indian River Lagoon, being that it is a more contained area with less flushing of water and being close to human activities, we have a higher amount of pollution than in the Atlantic Ocean where currents will take those materials and spread them out to farther distances. So now we have a higher percentage of sea turtles with fibropapilloma, especially in the green sea turtles, we see the highest amount. Although fibropapilloma has been found in all species of sea turtles, with the exception of leatherbacks. And in the green sea turtles, they're exposed to human um, chemicals that we're releasing, like um, organochemicals, into the Indian River Lagoon, which won't directly harm them in terms of getting fibropapilloma, but does decrease their immune system's ability to fight off viruses and diseases. So, what can we do as individuals? To educate is the most important thing. Educate others about why we should not be releasing harmful chemicals and pollutants into our waterways. Protect our sea turtles. What you see now is the female turtle covering up her tracks after she's finished laying her eggs. This is done because no other creature should spot where she has laid her eggs. But what is it about sea turtles that people care about so much? I care about turtles. Why aren't you working on buffalo or birds? What is it about turtles? When you see them in the water, they are just so wonderful, so pretty, and they can move easily. I think it's a very sympathetic animal. <laughs> came came to mind. Mm -hmm. There's a scene that I mean, they got that a precision hole back, and it's just, just by feel, you know, and and it is a precise precision. Yeah, mm -hmm. that big that hole, just like a perfect cylinder when you yeah, look at it. Yeah, it's just perfect. I don't know about you, but I couldn't do that with my feet. <laughs> no, you can't. No, I don't <laughs> think. <so. laughs> really, I don't know what really get me into you know liking to do that so much but it has to do with probably the first time that i saw it and then the group that was there you know the passionate side that i saw when people you know checking the interesting because que c'est des animaux qui ont presque disparu en guadeloupe et il y a besoin de les aider à à venir donc pour qu'elles reviennent plus ici et on utilise la tortue aussi pour protéger l'environnement les plages pour protéger aussi les poissons et la mer avec des engins de pêche plus sélectifs. Mm -hmm. Donc c'est travailler sur les tortues, c'est aussi travailler sur la protection globale de l'environnement. Mm -hmm. Donc c'est très intéressant. And like it's very much cruel like you can take the egg plus the female and like you kill a whole five generation per season. Mm -hmm. And it all depends how many female nester they take a year. Yeah. So the cruelty was what it, bothered you the most. Exactly. Yeah. They are magical in the water. Mm -hmm. And you'll be swimming hand over hand, trying to catch up with him, and he'll stop and look up. And when you get above him, before you go down, he's gone again. Right now, there's a large problem with overfishing and waste in the oceans and the beaches. Um, there's a lot of fishermen's nets that are catching these turtles on their necks and their fins. Um, and it's causing a lot of turtles to wash up dead on the beach. And this is a big issue, especially around uh, uh, laying season. Because a lot of the turtles are coming close to the shore to lay their eggs, but they're actually being caught um, and killed. So uh, these volunteers are putting in a big effort to try and reduce the kinds of rubbish on the, uh, on the beaches and the shores, um, as well as to serve the eggs and uh, ensure that these, um, these turtles and the eggs are having a safe uh, hatching environment uh, during this time of year. Today's world is unlike that of long ago. The oceans are threatened by human pollution and greed. Ancient homelands have become deserts. Islands are overrun by vermin. And the future for these reptiles may depend on us. We don't know really what role they play in, in the overall um, 
scheme of things with the ecosystem. And I think that's one reason why we should use any means to protect them. There are many, many animals that we really don't, humans don't see a, uh, a need to, to spend the effort and the time to conserve, but uh, just the fact that we, we don't know, um, I think, means that we should. Throughout the world, irrespective of culture, there is an affinity for the turtle. Throughout the world, we have myths that ascribe various characters and features to turtles that we like to teach our children, like being steadfast and being resolute. Here in this country, we have our own myth about the tortoise and the hare, and we teach our children that being steady and continuing to run the race can lead to victory. You don't have to be the fastest, you don't have to be the best. This year we were really excited. One of the turtles that we took a flipper off of last year and turned her loose, it was a great big female, probably about 50 years old. She crawled up on a beach in central Florida and laid eggs this year. And that's really exciting because, you know, up to that point, people usually kept turtles that with one flipper in an aquarium or in, an, uh, or in a, a, a park. Well, we proved that uh, three flipper turtles can go out there and add to the genetic makeup and they can actually crawl up on the beach with three flippers and have their babies and lay their eggs. They're 200 million years old. Those are living fossils that we put back in the ocean. And hopefully with a, a lot of help from our friends that help us work on turtles, we'll see them into the next millennium. But it makes you feel really good. You know, we use so much of our assets and uh, our environment up. It's so nice to put something back for the future. Ever since I was a very young boy and I was always interested in marine biology, but then one day, it was 1982, I was a second year biology student. I walked into the school and there was a big sign that said, Aribata, we need volunteers. And I thought, well, I've heard about the Aribatas and the turtle nesting. I should go check it out. Then I came to Ostinal, right here at this spot. And I saw the Aribata happening. And right then, it struck me. Like, I've had to study turtles and I've been doing turtles ever since. Hmm. So it would appear that even from the small variety of reasons, it seems that turtles appear to possess something that people like and want to preserve. At least that's the broadest definition. But regardless of reason, the reasons shown aren't out of malice or greed, but out of kindness and dedication to be saving these lovely creatures. That's why there are people who are even getting involved, to make sure that the turtles aren't killed more than what is allowed by conservationists. All night against egg thieves. This beach at Ostianal is only about four and a half miles long. And with turtles still arriving to nest at dawn, there is not much space left, and some inevitably dig up the nests of others. Many eggs get damaged, and the loss is enormous. The collection of eggs is important for the local economy. But local people are only allowed to take them for the first 36 hours of an Aribata. It's a conservation plan they're happy with. The community of Ostinal protects their turtles in many ways. Probably the main way is they respect the management plan. There are rules as to when you can harvest, when you can't, and the community as a whole complies. You can only harvest the eggs for the first 36 hours. The eggs have to be packaged in a special way. There has to be receipts, there's all this paperwork. And the people of Ostinal comply with all these rules and regulations to their very best. Are you ready for this? You look ready. You're beating me up already? You got your jewelry? Yeah. Okay. You can go. Moments like this reassure Richard Moretti that their work is worthwhile. Huh? All right, yeah. guy. Shall we send them in pairs? All right. Sounds good to me. All right. They're roommates. They've been roommates. <laughs> okay. There they go. Ready? Usually when you see wildlife being worked on, it's usually on a picnic table with a buck knife. 
but we've built a state-of-the-art facility to give these animals the care they really need. Those little turtles that were just released, when they came in, they had been trapped in roots when they were born, and they struggled to get out. They were cut all the way to the bones, all over their body from struggling with those roots. Uh, it took us two years to get them ready, and you saw those were nice, healthy turtles. And the feeling, taking a wild animal that's going to live a lot longer than I will, back out into the ocean and turning it loose for future generations, well, you can see, goosebumps. It's great. Nothing feels better than being able to put something back to the future. Commercial fishing puts nets into the sea, which can break loose and drift, catching much more than intended. These death traps can also snare and drown frightened turtles. Helplessly bound, they cannot swim to the surface to breathe. Shrimp nets have also taken a toll on turtles. What they developed was TED, a turtle exclusion device. A female sea turtle nests two to 10 times during the nesting season. Each time they lay 80 to 120 eggs. When a female sea turtle lays her eggs, she returns to the same beach she was born on. After about 60 days, the sea turtles will hatch. They will climb out of the nest and crawl to the ocean. Although 80 to 120 sea turtles may have hatched, only one in every 1,000 sea turtles end up making it to adulthood. There are so many obstacles a hatchling has to overcome in order to make it to the ocean alive. If a sea turtle doesn't crawl to the ocean fast enough, they could die of dehydration or get eaten by a bird, crab, or other predator. Luckily, there are sea turtle hospitals out there. They are designed to rescue and rehabilitate injured or sick sea turtles, and I was fortunate enough to visit one. We think it's tough digging down like this. She had to do this last night in the middle of the night, and, and it's amazing how they can take their flippers and carve out about the size of an oatmeal box just perfectly round and just scoop down in to be able to lay the eggs in there and then if you ever got a chance to watch a video of how they do it once they get done they're just gently covering it up and patting it down covering up and patting it down which is just amazing that that big of an animal can be just so gentle with their nets Good to go. And then the last thing we do is mark off the, the tracks so that the next team that comes through knows that it's already been counted. Walk all the way through. That's where conservation biologist Kim williams Gian developed a way to learn more about poachers. 3D printed plastic decoy eggs with GPS trackers. If a nest is poached, the decoy is scooped up too. One day I was just walking around and suddenly had an aha moment of what if we could track the, the poachers of the turtle eggs. So with that said, the staples of a documentary about sea turtles is good music, fun facts, and an awareness to keep the sea turtles alive. The nature of these documentaries is usually to a sympathetic degree, but this is because of what it's based upon, an endangered animal. But what do we do?
Let's move along to your final exam. Three questions that will account for 90% of your grade. I hate classes like that. Fair. Don't get smart with me, Sonny. 